I believe that if we have a framework on how we prioritize things, talking about what is most urgent, most important, being on top of our list, just like what Sir Vic of PLDT, resource person, mentioned a while ago, education, I think, should be on top of our list. We should accept by this time that even if the current ECQ, GCQ, enhanced community quarantine, general community quarantine is lifted, the way we are teaching or delivering our modules, the way our students are learning the same should be different under the new normal. And that's where the challenge is, Richard, because the present formal basic education system is designed to be delivered as a general rule face to face. Though I must say that currently we have what you call the alternative de delivery mode, the alternative learning system of uh, education, still the default mode is face to face. And as I said, the challenge therefore is coming up and implementing a comprehensive policy on flexible learning options with emphasis on distant learning education. In the midst of what's all happening, uh, Richard, we in the Department of Education is guided by our mom, Lenore Liling Magtolis Briones' pronouncement that education must continue. Under Article 14, Section 1 of the Constitution, if you may, to put some constitutional framework, on how important education is. It provides there that the state shall protect and promote the right of every Filipino citizen to quality education at all levels, and that the state shall take appropriate steps to make such quality education accessible to all. With this kind of framework and other laws related to education, Richard, our dear uh, uh, online uh, viewers and listeners, the Department of Education embark on what you call, prior to COVID-19, and of course up to now, what you call Sulong Edukalidad, which is based on four pillars. K-12 curriculum review, improving uh, the learning environment, ensuring that we have a learning environment or an environment that is not only conducive to teaching, but also to learning. Teacher teaching, upskilling, and reskilling, equipping our teachers to be very efficient and effective in delivering our modules. And more importantly, the fourth pillar, as it is happening right now, partnership engagement. And we are very happy that this is happening right now, that uh, we now have a platform, uh, a means to discuss substantially with you various issues and concerns that we are faced with, spearheaded by our private partner, Asia CEO. Now, in the Department of Education, in the context of my portfolio as the Undersecretary for Partnership, we have uh, launched or we are about to launch, subject to the to the official uh, declaration of our Secretary Ling Briones, the new Brigada Escuela framework. Brigada Escuela is the platform, if you may, of DepEd that uh, really uh, crystallized the concept of uh, DepEd public and private partnership. The traditional concept of Brigada Escuela, where two or three weeks prior to school opening, the whole community will be together, cleaning our schools, doing some mi minor painting or minor repairs in our classrooms. Under the new normal will un uh, undoubtedly be changed. Right now, the focus of our Brigada Escuela for the months of May, June, and July, again, subject to a declaration of our uh, Secretary uh, Leonor Briones, is engagement of partners, focus on, for example, disinfection of our schools, focus on our schools particularly that were used as quarantine areas for PUMs and PUI, persons under monitoring, persons under investigation for COVID-19, mobilization of essential items that we think are needed, thermal scanners, more uh, sanitizers, alcohols, face masks, and uh, protective equipment to protect our teachers and our learners, engagement of partners for the successful conduct in the few months of psychosocial, uh, first aid, psychosocial the, the debriefing activities, uh, engagement of PTA, especially under the new normal, we always keep on 
talking about distant education where children will now be learning at home. So parents should be oriented on their critical role on how to facilitate learning, on how to make sure that their children are not simply hooked to Facebook, to, on, uh, to online, to social media and doing their PlayStation or what, that they will make sure that learning is still happening. We also talk about under the Brigada Escuela framework, putting emphasis on gulayan sa paaralan and tahanan and other school-based initiatives. But allow me, uh, Richard, to dwell uh, a little more on the distant education. This is what is really important. And I think that's what was mentioned by uh, Sir Vic when uh, he said the uh, importance of education, importance of online teaching and in relation to the mandate of their uh, of our dear PLDT partner. The other day, uh, we met uh, the uh, the people from uh, SMART, PLDT Gabay Guro, and we talk about uh, some uh, models on how to do teaching or learning offline by way of activity sheets. We talk about the Bernet, Bernidus couple uh, model of uh, learning and teaching. We talk about the Gabay Guro platform where they will upload, uh, Gabay Guru is with the uh, smart PLDT, uh, uh, Richard. And uh, we talk about how we may upload uh, materials there so that that will be accessed easily by our teachers and learners as they, as they do their learning uh, at home. But given all this, the common conception of distant learning, they usually equate this with internet-based education, which should not be necessarily the case especially that statistics show that only 48% of our schools are connected to the internet. Of course, we intend to go for 100% in the next months or years to come. Statistics show, though, this is a good news, that 67% of our Filipino households have access to smartphones. But only 20%, according to studies, have access at home to internet. But... Uh, and, and I need to validate this, uh, each household has access to radio. Given all this basic uh, statistics, the, the concept now of distant education undoubtedly should be expanded because we, when we talk about uh, distant education in relation to internet learning, we talk about first those with have, which have connectivity and those which do not have connectivity. For those who have internet connectivity, we should talk about those learners or teachers who have computers, smartphones, or gadgets, and those who do not have these gadgets. For those who have these gadgets and those who have uh, internet connectivity, then DepEd, in the succeeding months, in the, in the context of engaging our partners, preparing our schools for the first day of uh, opening, we should uh, vigorously train our teachers how to use technology, how learners will use these various platforms, and against parents, how they may serve as effective facilitators of learning. For those who have internet connectivity, but they don't have uh, any gadgets uh, to facilitate learning, then we should talk about, in the context of partnership, uh, trying to source uh, materials for them to have uh, these gadgets so that... Uh, uh, distant learning should take place for those who do not have internet connectivity but have computers or gadgets. We should be talking about, as we are talking about, how to upload this application, this uh, programs, the activity sheets, so that this may be accessed offline by our teachers and our learners. And now, how about those who do not have connectivity, who do not have gadgets? How will learning still take place? Your DepEd, under our curriculum and instruction strand, are coming up with clear guidelines and plans how learning will still continue by way of activity sheets. And if physical classes can be conducted uh, already, we're talking about the what we have right now, the modified in-school, out-school approach, because it's very important that we still maintain social distancing in our classrooms, and that will only happen if we lower the number of students in each classroom from the current 40 to 50 to 15 to 20, 
So we are now talking about maybe uh, learning ha happening by shifts or by batches. Students, for example, in classroom one with 50 students traditionally will now have Mondays, for example, students 1 to 20 or 25 going to school. Students 26 to 50 staying at home, doing distant learning. By Tuesday, it will now be the turn of students 26 to 50. This time, students 1 to 25 will stay at home doing their activity sheets. And by Wednesday, maybe, they will now report for classes and the teachers will now make sure that they did their homework. So we're not saying that this is the model that we are about to, to, to do or to implement, but serious discussion on how to make sure that social distancing will happen in light of the new normal will be implemented and will be observed. And, and, and given all this, if, if, if you may, just like what I said, if radio is available in almost all of, of our household, then radio-based instruction should be maximized. Yesterday, we, we talked to some partners and uh, we talked about how we could do uh, radio-based uh, learning. Uh, then uh, we, we talk about, uh, obviously, if we engage a radio, they may not allow us to, to air for free for five hours or four hours, so at least one radio station national or local will give us one uh, hour of free airtime so on a monday we may ask our uh, learners to tune into radio station one from eight to nine subject english and then radio station two from nine to ten a.m subject science and then ten to eleven radio station three subject math so something like that innovation like that we your dep ed are definitely considering and our i would like to very to, to really emphasize that our secretary briones is very very uh, emphatic about this and that's why we have uh, developed or in the process of developing and we are about to launch and finalize what you call the learning continuity plan maybe generally i just would like to say that we are also focusing on homeschooling uh, i think you know our uh, online viewers or listeners Will be very interested. Uh, Mamdeling Briones have clear guidelines to be issued and expect guidelines as our curriculum and instruction team have uh, drafted the same on uh, how to conduct uh, in light of the new normal. So we are not only talking about homeschooling now for schools with uh, permit to offer public and private schools, but also independent homeschool learning. In the end, uh, to summarize, we just would like to tell and assure everybody here. Uh, and thank you, Asia CEO. This is a very effective platform. We thank you. We thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. But we would like to assure you that under the leadership of our Secretary Leonor Briones, we are aware of the problems, issues, and concerns, and challenges, and education that we are confronted with. You could be assured that under our leadership, that, that under the leadership of our Mam Liling Briones, that we are in the process of formulating the solutions and that in the process of formulating these solutions you could likewise be assured that we will consult you we will involve you we will collaborate with you because under this administration of secretary briones partnership is very important and that's the fourth pillar of sulong edukalidad engagement of partners at dahil po dyan dahil alam po namin din na ang kalagahan po ng ating mga partners dahil alam na alam po namin na yung mga bagay po namin na akala po ay hindi po namin kayang gawin. Akala po namin ay hindi po namin kayang abutin. Akala po namin ay imposible. Ngayon po ay kayang-kaya po namin gawin, kayang-kaya po namin abutin. Posibleng posible dahil po sa aming tamang kamalayan patungkol po sa tinatawag na partnership. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Muli, good morning to all of you. God bless us all. Thank you.